Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. If you saw my previous video, I was telling the truth this time. <laughs> I'm back again with another video. This one is part of this week's Color Throwdown Challenge, which just went live, hopefully, as this video also goes live. I am the hostess this week. And with the Color Throwdown Challenge, I am using some of the new products that Simon also just released right now as part of their February release, the Hello Beautiful release. I will have a link to the new release and then give this video a thumbs up if you want me to do a release and review video. I can probably do that possibly by the, by the weekend, <laughs> hopefully sooner, who knows? I have so much to catch up on, but anywho. I am using the Lavender Garden stamp set. It just, I love it, absolutely love it. And the funny thing is, is I don't color it at all to look like lavender. <laughs> this color throwdown challenge this week, it is pink, magenta, rust, and teal. So I stamped the images that I wanted to use from the set onto distressed watercolor paper. And I used my anti-static powder tool I stamped everything with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. I messed up because I didn't use my magnet after I stamped it the second time and it like clung to the cardstock and I got a little bit of smear. I don't know if it shows up on camera. There was like a very faint little smear, but I went with it. You're not going to be able to see it in the end. It doesn't matter. I brushed off the little bit of embossing powder that clung to the little smear of ink and we're good to go. So I used my WOW Clear Matte Dull embossing powder. So it doesn't look like it's embossed, but it gives me that raised edge that I like because especially when coloring with distress inks, etc., I really like, I like with all water coloring. I like having the raised edge. It just keeps things more contained. I don't have to stress out so much. Don't have to worry, you know, cause sometimes things just like get feathery and weird. So I did all that. And then I listed the colors that I used there to achieve the magenta color. I used picked raspberry with a little bit of uh, festive berries and a little bit of wilted violet, which I'll get to. That's like the last like color I use. But I used all distress inks for this and I just smushed them onto one of my little plastic palettes. So uh, sometimes I've shown in other videos, I'll just stamp or like smush the inks directly onto like the packaging, whatever works, something non-porous. So I did all that. And then I just used my little water brush it's another reason why I like the heat embossing because water brushes like this, pretty much every brand I've ever used, they're, they can be notoriously difficult to control the amount of water. So I find when an image is heat embossed, I don't mind if there's extra water, you know, it almost, you know, bubbles up in a sense, but that's fine because the heat embossing keeps it contained. So it's not just going everywhere. I still went outside the lines because I don't worry about it too much. <laughs> and these are floral. Florals are much more forgiving. So I started with the greenery of these images and I just used the crushed olive and the forest moss. And then the watering can was just sort of a happy accident. I was only gonna use the rusty hinge distress ink. And then I was like, I'm gonna add some crushed olive, you know, get that patina going. And I really liked that. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna add the peacock feathers ink as well and just kind of dot it in there. And I, I love it, <laughs> this is not, colors I would normally think of using. This color combo is not one I would normally think of using. I was kind of, you know, impressed with how things started coming together. So on this little like kind of toolbox, I use the peacock feathers. I did feather in a bit of that rusty hinge ink. In the end, it doesn't matter. You're not going to see it because I'm going to have it kind of behind everything else. But again, I was kind of experimenting and I really love this combo. So I'm going to come back to it in a minute with the background. But I did just very simple painting, just adding the color, like distress inks on distress watercolor paper. There's a reason why things are, you know, they're made to work together and everything just worked. So this lavender image, like I said, I didn't color it lavender colors, although honestly I love lavender. I just, oh, I have a lavender shortbread, lemon lavender shortbread, something like that candle burning right now. <laughs> I love it. I love the smell of lavender so much. It's just, and I love the look of it. It's pretty anyway. I just used sponge sugar distress ink, painted it in the little flowers with that. And then now for my magenta color. That is one color, another one of the colors in the distress line I really hope we eventually get is like a magenta sort of color. Because picked raspberry isn't deep enough in my opinion. It needs to be like 
deeper, plumier, if that makes sense. But I achieved that. I got the color I kind of wanted by having that little bit of festive berries and then that little bit of wilted violet. It just deepened this color to what I was going for. So after I was done painting everything in with my water brush, I let all of it dry. You always want to make sure things are completely dry before you do any die cutting, stuff like that, because um, cardstock, watercolor paper, etc., will tear very easily if it's still wet. So let everything dry and then I taped the coordinating wafer dies into place with just little bits of washi tape. And I'm really glad I stamped those extra individual flowers. I just did it because I had space on the paper. I, you know, I wasn't even really planning for sure to use them. And then I realized they are the exact same as the flowers in that little bundle, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to use them to like just add extra dimension. So I get all my wafer dies taped into place. I'm going to die cut everything. And then for my background, I was going to use the spun sugar and then went completely sideways <laughs> and started with the peacock feathers instead. I have my big old blender brush here. I need to get the full size distress ink pads. I've had the minis. I love my minis. I'll use both interchangeably, but for things like this, this is where the full sizing pad would be so much more convenient. But anyway, I used the peacock feathers and my big blending brush and I'm just blending this onto some um, Simon Says Stamp 120 pound smooth white cardstock. The blend isn't perfect. And in fact, in real life, I had like fingerprints on it. It was just, it wasn't perfect, but not worried about that at all because I'm gonna stencil over it and I'm gonna add splatter. So just, you know, if you're doing backgrounds and you, you smudge something or you get a fingerprint in it, anything like that, add some stenciling, add some splatter. You're not going to tell in the end. <laughs> so rather than do pink, I did that peacock feathers and then I'm using the spring boho circle stencil and I'm just placing it on top, just using that washi tape to hold it in place. And then I'm going to blend the rusty hinge over this. I never would have thought of combining these two, but there is something about these two colors together that's just, I love. So I wasn't sure if this was even gonna work, but I'm like, eh, why not? It's a piece of cardstock, let's try it. So I blended the rusty hinge on top of that stencil. I also thought this would look gorgeous and I need to get my hands on, I need to get some of that crackle paste, the Ranger crackle paste. That would have looked really nice to do the crackle paste and the stencil and then to like blend some of the rusty hinge over it. Oh, I don't know why I don't have crackle paste. I don't, I don't know what, what I don't know. Don't have an answer for that, but since I didn't, I just did ink blending. Still really like how this turned out. So after I was done blending that stencil, I trimmed this down to smaller than my A2 card base. This ended up being I think like three and three quarters by five, something like that. I trimmed off a good, like I think half an inch off, you know, each end in a sense, like a quarter inch off every side. So trim that down and then figured out how I wanted to arrange um, my little bundles of flowers and whatnot here. And then to make my life easier, and I've shown this in a bunch of videos, I just use washi tape because you're not gonna see it, doesn't matter. So I just use washi tape to tape the pieces together, just makes things so much easier. So I'm not fiddling with so many pieces and trying to adhere everything. So again, once I was kind of happy with that, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use a little bit of my craft tacky glue and also more washi tape to tape these elements together so that I can simply adhere them to my card front. So a little bit of craft tacky glue just to give it that little extra adhesive and then more bits of washi tape. And then to pop this onto the card front, I'm just using some of my mini 3D or thin 3D foam squares. Gives it a little bit of dimension, but not too bulky. And then I'm gonna use those same little foam squares to pop up those individual flowers. So again, you get that dimension, which I just love. So got all that in place. And yes, I had mentioned splatter, it's coming. <laughs> I wanted to do the splatter after I got the images on because I wanted to splatter both anyways. And it just made more sense to adhere all this then add splatter. So I'm gonna use some Perfect Pearls powder in Perfect Pearl, mix it with water and then just splatter this all over. Just put it in my little splat box and added all that splatter. And then once I had that on, I'm gonna use my Picket Fence Distress Paint and finish it off with that splatter as well. Once I have all the splatter added, wipe off my little palette, 
clean out my brush. Distress paint is permanent when dry. You don't want to wreck your brushes. Wash them immediately. And wipe things off is just easier than trying to scrape paint off and that sort of thing. So set aside that background to dry and then wash my brushes, etc. And then off camera, I white heat embossed one of the sentiments onto some black cardstock and I die cut it with one of Simon's sentiment label wafer dies. And then for the inside of my card, I'm going to use that spring boho circle stencil. And I just use that same scrap paper that I've been working on with like multiple cards. I use my scrap paper just until it's completely, you know, used up. So I use the scrap paper to mask off right at the fold of the card and then tape the stencil into place with some more washi tape. And then I use that rusty hinge ink again. I barely picked up any with the brush because there was so much ink still in the stencil that I just use, I just kept swirling the brush over it. So it was picking up all that extra ink left on the stencil and just transferring it to the inside of the card because I didn't want it to be super intense because rusty hinge can get really dark if you really want to layer it. But I just wanted it light, you know, I want that pattern, that little bit of color. So I got that added onto there. And then I'm going to put this into back into my Misty and I'm going to stamp another sentiment from this set. So on the inside, it just says, you are all sorts of amazing. So lined up that sentiment. Once I got it straight, I'm gonna stamp that with that same VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And that finishes off the inside of the card. So once I've got that stamped, I'm going to start adhering the remaining little elements like my sentiment strip and then the card front to the card base. So the little sentiment strip, I just popped on with more of the little thin 3D foam squares. And once I've got those in place, I'm going to line up my little sentiment just using kind of the edge of the card front there to get it straight. So get that adhered. And then I'm going to put uh, Simon's Big Mama foam tape on the back of this. Again, absolute fave. That with the Tim Holtz snips because the snips are Teflon coated scissors so they don't stick. So... And then with this foam tape, it's just the perfect match because this foam tape is very sticky. The backing comes off really well though. The old versions didn't, you had to really fight with it. I've shown that in old videos. The new version though is amazing and it's thin. It's about half as thick. It's about a 16th of an inch thick roughly. So I love it. Anywho, final embellishment, just some pale pink pearls. Only a few, I think I will like put on like five. Yeah instead of like 30, <laughs> like I normally do with embellishments. I only added a few, just to bring in more of that light pink. So I adhered those into place with little dabs of craft tacky glue. And then I pulled out a metallic cotton candy pink envelope from my stash, just to finish everything off. And I'll have a link to these envelopes as well. Um, I keep saying I need to keep, ugh, I need to reorder more envelopes. Yeah, these are some of my favorites. So anywho, that is my card. Like I said earlier, I will have a link below the video to the new Hello Beautiful release. I will also have a link to my blog post. And in my blog post, there'll be a link to the color throwdown challenge. I'll have my supply list, all that. All the info that you need to know is in the description box below the video. So you can check that out if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.